Hello folks and uh, welcome back to my channel. Uh, upon popular demand of one person, <laughs> um, uh, I'm producing this video or making this video today to show how to run um, MBS 3.8 as a guest operating system of IBM's VM 370 virtualization operating system. Um, and uh, it's been, I had this running for the last four or five years. I have an image here that's, uh, that works and I made it available on my box.com uh, sharing website and, and below this video in the description you can click on the link and obtain the image, unzip it and uh, if you follow my instructions you'll be able to run the operating system just like I do. So one of the things we're going to do is uh, once you unzip it you go into the directory and you see that we have an MVS subdirectory here. Uh, which contains the MVS DASDs. We even have a DOS VS DASD here, uh, as well as the VM DASDs uh, for the VM370 operating system itself. So let's get started and just type Hercules. If you have Hercules in direct, it will recognize uh, the Hercules configuration file, and that's all we need to type. Let me, let me make this, direct, this window a little bigger. Um, okay, so we can put it here, and we start connecting sessions. Now, one of the things about uh, the terminal sessions that we're going to need here is that there's quite a few of those so uh, because we need one for the VM 370 console then we need one for the MBS user on the VM and then several for the uh, MBS consoles and TSO consoles etc so if you bear with me just make um, you know create a terminal and I'm using Windows here by the way for the first time folks um, uh, I'm more familiar and more at home in Linux but uh, the Vista TN 3270 terminal is just so great that it's much easier because you can very easily resize it, etc. You can do it with X3272, but it's just better. It's just better here. Um, so uh, let's create several of these windows. And by the way, phone home, what I mean here is do, you know, make your mother happy and call you mom. Um, she'll be very happy to hear from you. And if you okay, so um, we'll start several of this. Um, is the space for one more? Yep. Okay, and maybe one more. And at the beginning, it's not quite clear uh, why we'll need so many, but bear with me, and you'll see why. Okay, so once we have, what is this, one, two, three, four, five, six windows, let's go and start, let's IPL VM370. Um, you will not have to know a lot about VM370. Obviously, VM370 has its own command language, etc. I'm, I'm somewhat familiar with VM370, but just enough to run guest operating systems. I don't really know a lot uh, about everything else. Uh, MVS is where I'm most at home, and obviously Linux. So, um, we IPL from DASD 249, so we type L uh, for IPL and then W, because this is the designator for DASD uh, on device 249, that's the IPL volume, VM370 starts to come up, and he wants to know, as you can see here, VM370 version 6, uh, change time of day clock, yes or no, no need to change that, because it thinks it's November 26, 2003 anyway, we'll let it believe that. Um, doesn't really matter. Okay, wants to know if we should do a cold or warm IPL. Let's do a cold one to um, empty all the spool files. Um, and then, um, as you can see here, the window is full and wants me to clear the screen. I have uh, uh, a key defined as the clear screen here. Um, and um, and that's about it. So now we'll go to one of these windows here, and we press enter, and to see the CP read here, control program read, and we'll type logon MVS. We'll ask for a password. The password is MVS. And you'll see that immediately um, the MIPS rate here goes up because. Uh, it's set up to automatically start running um, this um, MVS. This is the MVS console already. Specify system parameters for release 3.8 VS2. That's always VS2, release 3.8. This is our MVS. 
it's already IPL'd. So now what we need to do here is use the other terminals as consoles attached to MBS. How do we do that? Press enter on all these ones and we write dial MBS. By dialing MBS now this console is attached to MBS and not to VM anymore. We'll do the same here. Okay. And we do the same here, dial MBS. Um, and now we press enter in the MBS console. Okay, and MBS starts to come up. Um, this is a cold start progress of JS2 is already defined. And you see we have two MBS consoles. Um, and why is that? Um, let's start one more. And um, and you see that there's two consoles. So uh, this one was the primary console because this one came up first. So one of the things is that you see when whenever the screen fills up here, uh, everything stops in terms of uh, messages on the console. Let's get the console to roll, roll over when it fills up. You type K space S. You've seen this in some of my other videos. And change that to RD, delete equals uh, roll delete and the wait time should be 001. By doing that, we'll see that the console is able to scroll easily. Why is that important? Because as MBS generates messages, if they're not scrolled on the, on the console, they go into a buffer and that buffer can fill up. And when that buffer fills up, bad things start to happen. So we don't want that. So we type here KS and then override RD for roll and delete and then 001 and you see this console also starts to scroll down. All right, so there's a message here, a request for an answer. Uh, let's go to this console, R00, comma, go. Let's start, let's get MF1 started. What this means is a reply with MF1 options or go. MF1 is the reporting tool for the SMF um, records being collected by the SMF subsystem. Uh, let's get it started and so. Um, yep, and if you do now an F10, function key 10, should be, yeah, we see that we have command 1, that's the process that, um, the address space that, that executes commands for BSP pilot, and that's the pilot software itself uh, from TK3. By the way, this is MVS from TK3, this is not the TK4 uh, version of uh, MVS, it's somewhat different, it's a little bit more um, early, it's earlier software, it's a little bit more backwards, it doesn't have all the bangs and whistles that Jürgen Winkelmann uh, put into his TK4, his amazing TK4, but it's good enough, you can, we can certainly get stuff done here. And since I have a very fast computer, let's see here, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight processors and about 32 gig of RAM, and this is an i7 processor. It's a very fast processor. It doesn't matter so much that we only have one CPU available in VM370. Uh, VM370 in this version that we have legally available on Hercules, there's only support of one CPU. Even though uh, the MVS operating system underneath it could run on two CPUs. And if I'm not mistaken, there should be a way to um, add one more CPU and make that second CPU exclusively available to a guest operating system. But uh, this is too advanced for me. I don't really know enough uh, VM370 to get this to work. But this works, certainly. Um, uh, it's fast enough on my computer here. And uh, you'll see that um, now that we have all those things running, we also have MF1 running because we allowed it to get running. Net, that's VTAM, and we also have uh, TSO. So, as you can see here, there's a TSO console right here. If I type HERC01, um, no password here, um, and this is uh, TSO. Um, yeah, and it picks up the date here correctly, 6-25-2017. The time is a little off because it's only 3 p.m. here, but uh, that doesn't matter. Uh, it doesn't have RFE, my preferred environment, but it does have RPF, which you also have in TK4. Some people prefer RPF, I, I just prefer RFE. Shouldn't be too difficult to install all RFE here, and it's freely obtainable from uh, Greg Price, amazing website down under in Australia. 
I was in Australia just uh, three weeks ago. I should have visited him or at least written him that I'm there. I could have met with him. Uh, but look up Greg Price at, uh, uh, I, I don't remember the website, but Greg Price and Imon and RFE, you will land on his website. I guess uh, some great stuff there. Um, yeah, I mean, this all works as normal. And we still have our VM still running and no CPU at all. I mean, this is small fries. We can go and check what the, in the VM 370 console, what the processor usage is. If you do indicate load, comes back 3% three CP, 3 CPU, 11% storage. We could easily run another 10 copies of MBS here easily. Um, so um, this all just runs fine. MBS, everything else about MBS, uh, you already know what to do there. There's really not much I can uh, show here. Um, so let me log off. And now the question is, how do we shut down this thing, right? Um, Uh, we could also, by the way, have a second logon going on. The passwords here are the same as in TK4 standard after for a fresh installation. So, yeah, as I said, uh, let's see if I want is installed here. No. Uh, yeah, I'm, everything is as usual nothing special here once you're running mbs it's just very normal mbs uh, no special treatment mbs is aware it's running under vm370 because some the ibm program has put in some coordination in there at a very low level that we're not aware of but, but it's there um, and so they can communicate especially with later versions of mbs and and uh, with vmxa and vm ESA, there's a lot more coordination so they can decide who's paging here um, because MVS lets VM do, do the paging if it's aware it's running under MVS. But uh, we don't need to know anything of that. Um, so uh, at this point, you know, there's really just not much more to show than how to shut down. So to shut down, my preferred way to do it is to let the BSP pilot that comes uh, from TK3 from, let me see if I can spell the name right here, from Volker. Bantke, uh, who wrote TK3, and then Jurgen Winkleman took it over, made TK4 out of it, or TK4 minus. Um, so what you could do is type BSP pilot force F BSP pilot shot fast, and it will pass it pass a message to BSP pilot to shut down everything in the fastest way possible. Okay, so. BSP says, okay, fast shutdown was requested. Running script shot fast. Dataset process is to parmlib. That's where it sees what needs to be shut down on volume MBS rest. And it will now, as quickly as possible, shut down everything. Um, let me see if there's an open request. Mm, no, TSTK has obviously, which is required for TSO, is um, not accepting logons anymore, which makes sense in one. TSO uses to log on while you're trying to shut down. And by the way, 35 years ago um, or so, when I was a TSO programmer on a large mainframe environment, um, there were very rarely situations where they needed to shut down during the day. I think I saw it once or twice, and there was a big event that I still remember it. Um, but usually, uh, they would only shut down the machine and shut down T uh, MVS maybe once every couple of months. Uh, those machines were always running at 85, 90% CPU. And back then there was a normal thing. Nobody was complaining, oh, my CPU is at 85%, what are you gonna do now? Because they bought the processor, they bought the mainframe to run it, hopefully at 85, 90%, but not more. And they only started to think about buying a new machine when they were hitting 95 or 100, 101% all the time. Um, I remember at the time there was a great uh, mainframe monitoring tool called Omegamon by a corporation called the Candle Corporation, which was eventually acquired by IBM. Uh, I think Omegamon is still out there. I still see some videos out on YouTube about Omegamon, um, but I, I haven't played with it anymore ever since, since the 
um, mid 80s or so okay so let's see where we are able to shut down um, yeah it continues to shut down this takes a while this okay tk is not accepting logins second termination measure. okay now it wants a response so it says one ikt ikt we know is already um uh um that's ts so or tcas okay it continued by itself there was no need to reply um the bsp pilot required is replied to the outstanding request so let's see here where we are okay everything is down uh vtam is down as well so the only thing that's running is jess and how do we shut down jess we should all know that by now by now dollar p jess to term okay that's for ending jess to and terminate and so now um Let's see, all functions complete. That doesn't mean just to have stopped yet. I just finished all functions. We need to be, see hasp 085i, or zero, hasp 85, which should come in maybe 10, 15 seconds. Um, uh, yeah, it's ending some initiators. There's a lot of initiators for such a small setup. I don't know. I uh, would have to go into sys1 parmlib to reduce the number of just two initiators. Where would you find the settings for this? And sys1.parmlet and then jest2 something um, or hasp maybe, but either hasp or jest2. And there's the parameter data uh, member with all the parameters for jest2. And it's very easy to go in there and change the number of initiators. Always make a back make a backup of the jest2 uh, parameter file. If you make changes so that if that one the new one doesn't come up. At, at uh, when you start Jess, you can give it a, an option to start Jess from from a different um, member configuration member than the standard one, and so you can still come up and make changes. Just common practice. Uh, also, whenever I make a change in Jess, to I immediately IPL and test just to make sure that everything is running fine. Uh, so Jess is still going down here. Now I don't want this line here to show anymore. How do I do that? I do K. E, comma one. I don't want to see the first line either, because it bothers me. And so do K E minus one. And so that is now gone. I can do the same here. K E minus one. Okay, that is gone. Still waiting for just two to stop. Okay, just two is gone shut down oh, I must have been higher up I didn't see it so now we stop the SMF collection with Z EOD Z end of day um, and then all we have to do is quiet and that's it we have returned control to my MVS session above as you can see here and um, yeah as you can see Interestingly enough, VM370 doesn't immediately release the storage because it's demand paging system, so that makes sense. It doesn't release storage unless there is storage um, pressure, um, so that makes total sense. So let's log off here. Okay, so all these sessions are back. Um, um, and now we switch back to the VM370 console. And all we have to do is say stop all. Well, it doesn't need to stop all here, but uh, disable all so terminals won't be working anymore. And then shut down. And it goes on very, very quickly. VM, um, even the modern in incarnation of VM370 called Z slash VM, IPLs very, very quickly. I've seen it IPL on real machines. It's just up within a couple of you know, two, three seconds. ZOS, the modern MBS, takes quite a while to wipe. It could be one or two or three minutes. In very big environments, it can take up to 10, 15 minutes to fully IPL and establish all the V10 links, etc. So that's it, we're done here. Um, so, uh, so nothing more to say here. Uh, we can just shut down and that's it. Um, 
So um, I hope uh, you're going to be able to download the image from the description, from the link in the description below this video. If you like this video, please press on the uh, like button and please do subscribe to my channel to get notification of future videos. Thank you very much. Goodbye.
Thank you.